case is about the Lockheed Martin UFO sighting. This happened in Agora, California in December 16th in 1953. Clarence Leonard Kelly Johnson and his wife drove to their Lindero Ranch House in Agora, California. The house is on a hill facing west, so facing the ocean, right? So at approximately 5 p.m., uh, Mr. Johnson was looking out of a large window facing the west and just watching the sunset when he noticed what he thought at first was a black cloud. The sun had just set below the horizon, but the clouds were orange, I'm, I'm sorry, were red and gold. Right, sunset. Okay, yeah, beautiful sunset, right? And the only other clouds were thin layers at a very high altitude. He was wondering what this black cloud-looking thing was, especially since the sun was behind it. Oh. You, you would have seen light right. coming through it, like mm -hmm. a cloud, right? And he couldn't see through this object. So initially he thought it must be an aircraft, you know, contrail. You know, that there's, there's some aircraft up there that's making a thick smoke trail. He watched this black thing and noticed it hadn't moved for nearly three minutes. And it hadn't changed um, shape. So he started to think it might be a lenticular cloud. So here are some pictures of lenticular clouds. Beautiful clouds. Right? That one looks like a UFO right there, right? <laughs> he's, he's waiting for them to land, right? These are clouds that are formed when moist and dry layers of air pass over a mountain or a large structure. And what happens is it causes turbulence mm -hmm. and it makes it go in a S-shape turbulence, right. And what happens is the, the sinking air warms and dries and the cooler air rises. And when the cool air reaches a certain dew point, it turns into these clouds that are round shaped. So that's basically what a lenticular cloud is. So he said this object was stationary and the outline did not disintegrate or degradate in any, any way or form. So he asked his wife, can you run and get my eight power binoculars? So she handed him the binoculars and he ran outside to look at this object. But he kept looking at the object as he's running outside. And when he focused the, the binoculars, he was convinced at this point that it was a UFO, that it could not be a cloud or anything else. And he said at this time, the object was moving fast and heading between 240 to 260 degrees from where it had originally been sitting. And he watched the object as it started to move behind the layer of, of haze. And he estimated that the object was traveling at a terrific speed due to the foreshortening of the, the um, main axis of this object, right? Focused in the binoculars, he said that the object was flat black and had a very distinct shape. He said it was moving so fast he was unable to make out any additional features. And for those of you who thought that um, Kelly Johnson's description sounded very scientific, there's a really good reason for that. For those of you who don't know, Kelly Johnson was the chief engineer and aircraft designer for Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. And Skunk Works is Lockheed Martin's top secret aircraft design division. He to this date, is one of the few genius engineers who could, in his mind, he could design an aircraft. Right. Mathematically, in his mind, he could figure out the shape, weight, fuel consumption, speed, altitude, aerodynamics, everything. Yeah. That's how smart this guy was. The CIA approached him and said, we need a spy plane to fly over Russia. 
high altitude that no missiles from the ground can reach. That plane turned out to be the U-2. Now, when they were building the U-2, it was super top secret. Right, right, right. You know, everything was compartmentalized right. so that one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing kind of thing. And the, and the other thing is, when you have something this top secret, where do you test it? Where do you test it? You have to, yeah. you have to take it somewhere. And, and because of the, this plane, if you don't know, the fuselage has two wheels. The wings are so long because it has to fly so high in it yeah, yeah. that they bend. So what they had to do was they had these prop wheels. They had to prop them up with the wheel on the end of the wings. And once the plane takes off, those fall off. So when it lands, it only lands on two wheels. A lot of this plane is made of titanium. So he needed a place to test this super secret project. He is the reason that we have Area 51. They created Area 51. Oh, at, they created oh, the Groom Lake facility to test the U-2 spy plane. You know, from the Russian satellites that were leaked, you know, the pictures that were leaked out, the, we now know of the famous Groom Lake facility at Area 51. But it was Kelly Johnson who was instrumental in creating that facility because they needed somewhere so remote that they could fly this thing around. And <clears throat> the good thing was UFOs at the time were a big subject. So they didn't mind if someone saw like they didn't know about the u2 but if they saw it at a super high altitude thinking it was a ufo yeah. that was okay for the cia they didn't mind that but there was a problem because at one point during the u2 program gary powers the pilot of the u2 was shot down in russia he didn't do what he was supposed to do he didn't crash the plane in a way that it would destroy itself and he didn't use, he had a pin that had poison. He was supposed oh. to kill himself, which he did not do. They now needed a new spy plane that could travel faster than these missiles. Right. That's when they decided to, they told, the CIA came to him, told them exactly what they wanted, and he designed and built the SR-71 Blackbird. Blackbird. Now, the Blackbird that you and I know, you, you and I only know version 12 and version 13. The A-12 was a version for the Air Force. Okay. I've seen the A-13, the one, the one on, on, on the Intrepid is an A-12. Oh, yeah. this, this picture here is an A-13. Right. It, the, the front end is different. The A-12 goes like this, and the 13 oh, is like this. It's a different shape in the very front. But this was the first plane ever, because of the high altitude, it has what they call scramjets. So you, you see these pointed things in the front? They, they move in and out oh. based on the airflow that's going through because they're a thin atmosphere, right? right? Yeah. And they need to have a high airflow. So these nactals, these 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 things, they move in and out of the plane to create more airflow. They had interesting thing uh, with the SR-71. They needed so much titanium for this. They had all these fake companies buying buying up this titanium. And there was a there was a guy working on a on a desk a bench. I'm sorry in Skunk Works, mm -hmm. and he accidentally dropped a piece of titanium, it shattered like glass. Did he get it on the right spot, probably? No, it wasn't pure titanium. So then they found out that they needed to find pure titanium, or as close to pure as possible, and only buy it from those sources. They had all these fake companies 
buying this stuff for the CIA. It was actually CIA fake companies. And the other thing is the SR-71, even though it was envisioned back in the 50s, a lot of the details of the SR-71 are still still top secret. Even the top speed, everyone knows it goes above Mach 3, but they don't know the exact speed of of the SR-71. As you can see, Kelly Johnson wasn't just your average guy looking at a cloud going, oh, that's a UFO. No, this guy knows what he's talking about. Okay, and yes, exactly. He knows how to look at it. Looked at it, there's no light coming through it. It's a solid object. Once he saw it through the binoculars, you know, he could see the distinct shape of it. His testimony holds a lot of weight because of what he did, who he was. Now, ironically, part two, ironically, Lockheed Martin that day had another top secret test where they were testing the prototype for the Navy's WV-2 plane, which is the warning star. That's the name of the plane at the exact same time of his sighting. This plane has uh, four engines, a prop plane, right? And it has an extended flight time and it's for the early warning aircraft system. The underbelly of this aircraft has a large blister, mm-hmm. you know, like a bubble underneath of it. And that has a lot of um, antennas, radar antennas inside. And then on the top, it has a, like a dorsal fin, like a dolphin or a shark. And that has high altitude radar antennas. So they were doing a test flight going up the, the coast of Southern California. Okay. So they were traveling north along the off the shore but along the coastline you know far enough out that people are not going to notice them right and aboard this this particular aircraft that was being tested was lockheed martin's senior test um pilots two of them rudy thorin thorin and roy wilmer and then there was a, a another pilot joseph f ware jr and also lockheed martin's chief aerodynamicist philip a coleman and another lockheed martin um lockheed martin pilot charlie grugman so wilmer was at the was the pilot in command but thorin was at the controls so at 458 the aircraft was traveling at 14,000 feet and thorin changed the heading from southeast to west. As they turned, Wilmer noticed a dark shape at about the same, at about their altitude. And he watched it for a couple of minutes. Then he pointed it out to Thorin and he made a joke. Hey, look, there's a UFO over there, right? And then Thorin looked at it and he turned the aircraft slightly, you know, to get a better look. So they all watched it. All these guys on board the plane, they watched it for five minutes. At one point, they increased their airspeed to 225 miles per hour. And even though they were going that fast, they couldn't keep up with this object. And they said it was very large. Then the the black shape turned to the west and took off at a high speed. And they said that the outline remained distinct as it shrank into a dot and disappeared. And at that time, the the crew went back to their flight tests. You know, they said, okay, it's gone, whatever it was, you know, let's just do what we're here to do. So the following day, they have to report to Kelly Johnson about that flight. Oh, and when he just had the... So, yes, <laughs> yes. So Thorin <laughs> was giving a briefing about the tests that they had done that previous night. And he just happened to mention, he was afraid to, but he happened to mention that, you know, we thought we saw a UFO. And when he said that, Kelly Johnson got excited and told him his story. Over the next couple of weeks, he kept pressuring these guys, look, I need you to make a report. I'm going to send this up the chain of command. And they were all, you know, they didn't want to, make a report you know yeah, because yeah. that makes them look like a, a 
that time. Right. They don't want to lose their job. Right. He had them all write a detailed report, and he wrote a cover letter for that. He he made a file for it, a Lockheed file. Oh, he did. He did. So it's still record. It's yeah, it's, it's a file. record. Oh. It's called Lockheed file L A C dash. I meant forward slash. I'm sorry, one four nine five three six. And then the cover letter was addressed to Wright Field, which now is Wright Patterson Air Force Base. But back then it was Wright Field. Uh, that's where supposedly the uh, Roswell oh, crash was crash taken. Was because at Wright Field they have the Foreign Technology Division, which is also, you know, Project Blue Book was there as well. The letter was addressed Air Force Investigation Group on Flying Saucers. And he kind of had second thoughts about sending it to the Air Force. Only because Lockheed Martin was in the running for a new program that the Air Force was going to have, and he thought this might ruin their chances of getting the, you know, they might think, oh, these guys are nuts. Why do we want them oh, working the on a top yeah, secret yeah, yeah. program, you know? Get the budget because yeah, because the Air Force had the new Air Force Covert Strategic Reconnaissance Aircraft Program that they wanted to get the contract for because it's a lot of money. So here's Kelly Johnson's drawings from the fi the actual file. Oh wow. The thing that they wrote up. Yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. Okay, so here here's Kelly Johnson's drawings of this object that he saw. So the other thing is it also oh, looks like this. The B2 stealth yeah, bomber is more. very similar. Oh, this wow. was seen at Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is a drone of some kind. And I think even though this case happened so long ago, because of the person, the persons, not just him, but the, that entire crew that also worked for him at Skunk Works, you know, for all these guys to have seen the same thing and not know what it is. And working with those stuff. Right, and they're the ones on the cutting edge of technology. For them not to know, then it had to be something extraordinary. And we'll see you next time on Inside the Skiff.